Mark here for Mark 2.0. Brian's joining us tonight as a guest host. And we have the iconic actress you remember from Better Off Dead, Amityville 2. Uh, Diane Franklin, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I am thrilled to be here. And uh, I just am so honored that you asked me to be on your show. It, it's for sure. Lovely. You know, we grew up watching you uh, in your films. And you haven't aged, right, Brian? Aww. Absolutely. I'm just... I'm in awe. I was in high school, and I tell you, I I would know you anywhere. Your image is permanently etched in my soul. Oh, thank you. Uh, you know, that makes me feel so. Um, I don't. I'm just like really happy because I sometimes when you see somebody, you know, you haven't seen them in a while, and then you're kind of like, oh man, it's a bummer. <laughs> Sure. So I'm really glad that you think, oh, I bring back the memories from those yeah. films. That makes me really happy. <laughs> well, let's take us on your journey, how you started in the industry. Um, I started with, um, I actually wanted to be an actress, literally since I was four years old. But I wasn't one of those kids that was performing, like I wasn't like having to get my the attention. I was that kid who would sing and dance by myself in the living room, you know, like in my own world, like just hearing the music and feeling it. And um, I, I guess, you know, I just wanted to, I, I watched TV. I was raised on television. I, my parents were uh, you know, Austrian and German immigrants. So they didn't, they took me to like later on to like the opera, you know, that was like my dad took me to the New York opera um later on uh, maybe like when I was 10 or something but when I was little I was raised on tv and there was a tv show called that girl and it was about a female actress and she was dark haired and I have dark curly hair but at the time when I was growing up in the sick in the 60s um the look was well towards the 70s really bl that blonde American blonde blue eyes um you know it just wasn't an ethnic look so when Marla Thomas was on TV, that really stood out to me and she became my idol and she played an actress on the show and I really liked her energy and her personality. And if you watch the show, I have a feeling you'll see why I like her because I have the same, do, do you know what I'm saying? Brian's like laughing. because Did she throw her hat up at the, yeah. in the intro? I know that show. She it, was, it was awesome. like Mary Teller Moore, uh, yes. kind of, but, but she was funny and cute and just had great energy. So because of that, at four years old, I, I really, I was like saying to my parents, I want to be an actress. And my parents were like, what? What are you talking about? This is oh. crazy. Like, so I, I don't know if that's acting. You know, like they had no idea. So um, we met an agent at the time and at the, they said, oh, her hair is too short and curly. She's going to wait till it grows out and uh, then try again. And I never gave up on I never forgot that. And I took ballet. I took um singing um I, I joined school plays um I just kept doing it until I was 10 years old and then I told my parents can we do this again <laughs> and they're probably like why doesn't she forget this what's this <laughs> you know, it was so funny so um yeah so that's really then I started and I I started with modeling and uh commercials and um just if anyone wants even more detail on that I have uh my first book uh, which is, there? I have three books, but if my first book, Diane Franklin, The Excellent Adventures um, of the Last American French Exchange Babe of the 80s, that's my first book, um, tells the mm -hmm. basic um, experience of how I became an actress, how a girl from the suburbs, immigrant family, no connections, made it, you know, and the work I did and what I had to do. And uh, I think, you know, there's a lot of autobiographies that are out there, but maybe none that are so like almost like this is how you do it you know so um as opposed to i had a terrible experience my experience was i was very hard working and i really and it was me it wasn't my parents pushing me so my experience was a little different than i think some people's you know? so your parents just had no idea what to do at all. Not at all. Not so at you all. were probably kind of fortunate not to have one of those Hollywood moms that are pushing you too hard. Oh. Or. 
yeah, that probably worked out really well because your parents really didn't know what was even going on. No, in fact, you know, I'll tell you something. Uh, it's interesting. A lot of, you know, obviously they're immigrants. They were more hesitant than probably most parents in the entertainment business. You know, they were like, <laughs> you know, more like, are you OK? Smart. You know, yeah, really, you know. But I'll tell you something it was an interesting advantage starting at a young age. Uh, first of all, for me, I always remember when I was acting, I went to a public school. But because I was acting at such a young age, it was like my, it was mine. And I, I felt like when I went to school and I, I could be with the kids and, you know, and like hang out and be a, you know, a regular kid. But then no matter what happened in school, the acting was mine, my separate thing. And it really gave me, um, I was actually very shy, strangely enough. I was shy and it, it gave me a lot of confidence. And um, I guess because there was no real pressure to do it, I felt the challenge I liked. You know, I, I just, it was a different head. I, I didn't come from the, probably the head where like, I've got to make it. I've got to, you know, a lot of people, they go into the entertainment business and it wasn't, okay. I have to say that, you know, people go into it for a lot of different reasons. Okay. And some people want to do it and they never have the parents to, who support it, you know? Um, but because I was raised as an only child, my parents were able to focus on it, but it wasn't like they had a lot of money. It was just sort of like they got the, you know, word of mouth. And I think it really has to do with me not giving up. You know, the perseverance at a young age is really, uh, you have to listen to it. Um, and then, you know, that child makes the decision. I remember when I was in my teens at a certain point, I thought, oh, um, I did an extra job with Brooke Shields. Oh. It was an extra, that was my first movie experience, really. Uh, I was an extra in one film and it was Endless Love. Wow. And I had done modeling with Brooke before, um, so I knew her. But when I did this extra job, um, it was, I looked at her and she, she, first of all, she was stunning. And that was Brooke's time. I mean, that was her heyday. Like, mm -hmm. she uh, was just, she was the it girl. Um, uh, and in fact, so much so, her dark eyebrows is what got me able to get in the business because when she became a hit everyone was look all the agents and people were looking you know people were look, looking for girls with dark eyebrows, dark eyebrows. Uh -huh. isn't that funny so that was my in you know like kind of like how her look sort of helped me and um your look actually caught on with the curly hair big time <laughs> you like a lot of girls in my high school adopted your look i know it was from you oh thank you and you know that's the other thing too like i I my swear. mom literally came home with curly hair. I'm not she, kidding. <laughs> I swear. Sorry about that. No, it was great. Seriously, again, I never would have thought, I mean, literally, literally growing up was such a in, in nightmare as far as curly hair goes. It was not popular. It was the frumpy girl or the, you know, the girl who didn't get the guy or the girl who was the best friend, but it was the awkward looking girl. It wasn't the dream girl that happened like in Last American Virgin. And that really was a huge, it's like Brooke helped me and then I wound up oh, being the first actress who was a teenager who was the dream girl in a film because they would have, really? there were other girls who were, um, you know, obviously there were actresses who were had curly hair before me, but they weren't the dream girl. They weren't the like the girl that I would fall in love with. You know, yeah. uh, they don't always play like either they or they. I mean, the only one I could ever think of, and I was looking, uh, was um, the girl in Carrie, um, Amy Irving. But Amy Irving wasn't even the lead. She was the, you know, kind of sassy best friend, and you weren't really supposed to like her. So it was fascinating to me when, you know, literally when my dark curly hair came in, oh my gosh, like nobody had curly hair all of a sudden. Julia Roberts. Um, you know, uh, I mean, gosh, like, what was it? Dirty Dancing later on. Um, everybody started getting curly hair. So I actually wrote a book about it. Um, that's my second book, Excellent Curls. But but it's the beauty behind the trait that does it, actually. It, it You know, somebody had to take that curly hair, just like Brooke had to take the eyebrows. Yeah, and that was just, just awesome. And it just spread like crazy. I, I'll never forget it. And I actually was watching... Uh, 
uh, Better Off Dead today. And that's when it dawned on me all this. I'm like, that look, that is where the look came from, literally. And it took off like wildfire. Well, I'm happy that you saw that you realized it because I literally, when I did Better Off Dead, I actually wrote that we had like to do press kits. And I remember writing in the press kits, I can't believe that people are now, they ask me to leave my hair curly. Like that was such a, it's such a bizarre thing. And I, it really made me think, you know, truly, there's so many girls out there who, or people out there who think their look is unattractive because it's not in. But the truth is, it is beautiful. It's just, for me at this certain point, I had to wait for that style. Like I had to create that to happen. Yes. Um, but I, again, now today, I really feel like, look, whatever you have that's unique, rock it, rock it with confidence. And seriously, it will become what people want. I mean, that's what's kind of funny. It's it, it's kind of interesting how if you have, you know, whether it's like, you know, certain kind of look in your you know eyes or nose or uh, lips or just, or something maybe you even feel insecure about, that could be your calling card. That's how people maybe recognize you. That's how, you know, but you got to rock the confidence. You can't be shy, you know? Smart. Why, why is it that you quit NYU? Did you just know that you were going to blow up uh, with films? Oh yeah. No, there was no way. Every single time I went back to school, like I would try to go back and get, finish my degree. Every time I went back, I got another project. And so um, I kept bringing, they kept bringing me out to Los Angeles. Um, I remember I did a, a, a pilot for ABC and it was called Too Good to Be True. And it was before, it was, it was after Last American Virgin, actually. I did Last American Virgin and Amityville 2. And if that show had gone, I would have been a TV personality. And it was oh. very coveted by ABC. Like it was really, like they really thought it was going to go. Because it was sort of like um, Annie, except okay. it was kind of like Annie at a boarding school, you know? Uh, I don't know. So it's kind of interesting, but you just never mm. know as an actor where your career is going to go. I mean, if you asked me when I was younger, if I was going to be a, a movie star, a film star, like I would say, you know, probably, no, I mean, I didn't even imagine that that could be possible, but, you know, I've talked to some other actresses um, who I've grown up with, like, you know, I've seen like, again, you know, I've been in the business for so long that I know so many of the actors and actresses that have grown up and done a lot of films. And I, I talk to them and I say, you know, it was really just, we never knew where the cards were gonna fall. We never knew where we wanted to act, but we didn't know who was going to have their vision of us doing the role. Cause you know, actors always are at the mercy of whoever cast them, you know? Sure. So it's kind of, it, it's, it's, it's exciting. It's nerve wracking, but if you like that excitement, it's a great job. <laughs> and and back career. then it wasn't where you would go TV and, uh, you know, films like today. Although you did do some TV, you were on Matlock and uh, Charles yeah. in Charge. Yeah, I did. Um, I did movies of the week. I guest starred on television shows. Um, it was interesting. Okay, so back in the 80s, when you were an actor, that's, I mean, I was probably one of the few people that's never, I never had a regular job. I always acted, modeled, hand modeling, some anything that had to do with performing. That's how I made a living, theater, soap opera. Um, but in order to do that, you know, you, it was, there was a lot of pressure because you could only be known as one thing. Today, and my daughter's a, she's an actor, comedian, writer, but you can have many roles, you know, you, she can, one minute she's doing a movie, the next she's doing TV, the next she's doing live theater, she, you know, she's, you know, she's writing a show, she's, I mean, there's so many, she's doing TikTok. I think it's much better for performers today, you know, to be able to be, a, to be in the world, because there is more things for you to audition for and go for. So, you know. What's the latest thing you've got going? Oh, wow. All right. I've always got something going on. Okay, so first of all, I have now my third book, which is Diane Franklin, The Excellent Comedy of the Last American French Exchange Babe of the 80s. So the comedy is, as you said before, Better Off Dead. And so the first thing I have to say is that Better Off Dead is my 
I just love that film. I have, I mean, I was yeah. going to say favorite. It's hard because I love Virgin. Um, I love Amityville. You know, there's, I have a lot of, I love a lot of the films I've done and I, and I'm still, I'm still, you know, doing things. Um, Isn't so that, that actually kind of a true story? Yeah. Which one? That movie? Better Better off dead. Dead. Uh, it was based on, well, you know, it's funny. I, I've been very fortunate. Last Dimmer Convergen is based on a true story. Wow. From the director's oh. life okay better off dead is based on a true story of savage steve holland so these are both writer directors not interesting um i i wound up doing it and um uh i'd have to say well bill and ted does not <laughs> that's mm -hmm. a true story but I, i'm gonna have to ask you about keanu reeves yes. at some point though yes all right we'll go back to that <laughs> um so anyway so i've got my book and from that, I've been doing a lot of fun promotional things. So if people follow me on the internet, uh, if you follow me on uh, my Twitter or my Facebook or my uh, Instagram, I have some very exciting, fun promotions because this is the year I'm promoting my book. Like it just came out in February, wow. but you know, when you, this book is a nostalgic book. So it's not the kind of book that you would put out in the supermarket because nobody knows it. You know, you have to, you have to be of the time. Yeah. So, to me, it's word of mouth. So the only place you can get this book is by hearing me talk about it right now. And um, it's on Amazon. So if you look up Diane Franklin, you will find it. But if you have to be a better off. What I say is, if you don't know Better Off Dead, watch the movie first, yeah. then get the book. Because the book is everything you wanted from the film. Like, you want to know all the details behind it. Um, it is amazing. I worked a couple of years on it, and... I did it out of the love of the book and uh, I talked to Savage Steve Holland. He gave me some great information that I didn't even know. So uh, it's an excellent, it's excellent. It's a wonderful book. So that's awesome. But I have some very fun projects. Um, I did a very cool photo shoot. Um, I actually uh, have a song that I'm working wow. on, a little video. Wow. <laughs> so um, it is exciting. And uh, so I've got stuff coming up for the rest of the year. And uh, it's all, you know, just for people who love the movie and just want to go back and relive those memories. Somebody posted the movie, uh, Summer, the TV movie Summer Girl. That's how big of a following you have. They posted it on uh, YouTube. Oh. And it's blowing up. Yeah. Really? Oh, that's a good one. Summer Girl is really good. Actually, that was the only film that I was um, no, I was nominated to be nominated. Like they put my name up to be nominated for an Emmy. Ooh, and neat. that was, that would, it was just really nice to be up for something, you know? Um, so that's a good one. If you haven't seen Summer Girl, go on YouTube, check it out. It is a juicy uh, oh. movie, the movie of the week. Um, yeah. And also, um, Oh, there's a movie of the week I did called uh, Deadly Lessons. And that is with Bill Paxton. Okay. Oh, oh I, I love, love him. Bill Paxton. Yeah. And he play we play opposite each other. Oh. And he's a sweetheart. And I just love working with him. So that's another one to check on YouTube. Um, but also, I have some films that you can see. Um, on YouTube, you can watch Amityville Murders, which okay. is a film that I just played the mother. in. I play actually Louise DeFeo, who was... A real, the real person in uh, Amityville who was murdered by her son and the entire family was murdered in the, by the family. This is like a docudrama. Okay. It's called Amityville Murders Movie. All right, look up mm -hmm. movie. If you put Amityville Murders, you'll be brought to the actual murders. So yeah, no, I would like that. There. I also am in, um, in a movie called Ted Bundy, American Boogeyman, and that is on Hulu. Okay. Um, I have a cameo in that. And then um, I have another movie that's called High Holiday. Yeah, I've seen that. Say, Tom that's Arnold, a, you were yeah. only in the beginning, though, right? I'm in the beginning, and then they redo the scene uh, later on at the, okay. end, at the end, which is very funny because when we shot the film, but when we shot the scene, um, I guess I'm talking to, or I'm supposed to be talking to Tom Arnold, but they shot that scene outside a different time, so they edit it later, and it really works great. So it was oh, very fun. Awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, just so I'm, and then I'm, I have another. Um, I'm doing a short film in England in November, um, and it's kind of a horror horror film uh, called Paradolia, uh, so which is a very interesting concept. And uh, I'm I don't know I'm just always doing 
I'm doing things. I'm always doing stuff. And your so. characters are always different. It seems like you even had a small role in how I got into college. Yes. This one. Oh, oh, you know what? That was such a fun. Yes. How I got into college is actually one of my favorite roles. But um, you were so playing an older character. No, <laughs> I it played, made no sense. Really? I played <laughs> the mom. Well, I play, I was a teenager basically who played a mother, like a stepmom, And I was very irritated because uh, my husband, who's much older than I am, uh, his his actual son was going to college. We're like, it's almost like I'm the same age as his son. And I'm like, get out of here so we can, you know, go to college, get out so we can, you know, have our life. Um, but it was the early stages of that kind of thinking. It was just very funny. And Savage Steve Holland, who did Better Off Dead, directed it as yeah. well and wrote it. So, yeah. That was and, you, Thank you and, and it was one of the movies that they always had on uh, TV, like Comedy Central. Same thing with Better Off Dead. Oh, that's so great. I'm happy to hear that. I had no idea. That oh, yeah. Play. Yeah, that makes sense. Growing up, you wouldn't know what they played on, you know, TBS or Comedy Central. You name it. Oh, uh, it, it's it makes me so happy that um, I didn't realize it. But when I did Last American Virgin, I guess my performance was very real and very um so for a long time people thought I was horrible <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah evil. they thought I was evil and horrible and I was like I never saw that like I didn't get because I'm always like I'm an actress that's what you do your job is to play characters what's what what is the deal and um then when I was uh when I wanted to you know audition for Better Off Dead Savage originally wanted me for Beth mm. and I never saw it, like, I never understood that. Like, I was like, I no, 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 I'm Monique. I, I'm definitely Monique. Like, and so I came in as Monique and that's how I got the part. And that really, I think, changed my career. I figured it out today. I saw today they had a hard time making you the lesser of the two. Even with that big, ugly coat on, you were still outshining uh, Beth over there. And it just wasn't all that feasible. That was actually his only flaw in the entire film, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you, looked so, you looked a little too good to be, you know, not other, upsetting John Cusack, you know, right? <laughs> while the other one was just had him all flustered, you know. <laughs> right? Like, uh, no, you know, that's, um, it's it's so funny. I, I got to say, like, um, I'm friends with um, Amanda Wiss. She and she was in, uh, you know, she plays Beth. And she was, abs she's another girl. So adorable. So nice. But you always see her as like Beth. Like, you know, Beth, you know, you're going out with Beth. <laughs> that whole runner was so funny. Yeah. So John, John Cusack, I bet that was cool. I always, you know, I grew up, I was in high school during that time. So you knew not only what it was like to be really young movie star, but you were like hanging out with all of these John and Joan Cusack. What were they like? You know, I've never actually met Joan oh. um, because he was early. When I worked with John, it was early in his career. And John was like, you know, it, I mean, he, it was before anything serious in his career. I, I think, I'm not sure. I don't know why I thought he did the sure thing before Better Off Dead, but it came out after Better Off Dead. Mm. So, um, which was great. Yes. Oh, yeah. It was a great that is probably some of his best, I think, if, if you're looking at him personally. Yeah. Well, that's what, how we got to know him, you know? Yeah. Um, Better Off Dead, uh, I thought that that film always made him endearing. And it, mm. it, it made him, he was like the every man. And he was like the every teen, you know? It was like, he was every every guy. That was Absolutely. So it was really, uh, he was- Well, really that's American Virgin did a good job of that too. Yeah. You know, that broil broke that young broken heart and it, it got really dramatic. I mean, the storyline is really, really serious in that one. You know, it's really lighthearted and better off dead. Um, you know, uh, and that's the other thing when you talk about me doing uh diverse work. Um, what's really wonderful for me now as an actress is because I can I can go to a horror convention, I can go to a celebrity convention, I can go to a comedy convention, because the work I've done covers a wide range of tastes. Yeah. Uh, Last American Virgin, you know, that ending, it will never, it will never uh, go away because of that ending. If it was a happy ending, 
Mm-hmm. May not be, we wouldn't be talking about it today. And, and do, do you ever get sick of hearing that song, Just Once, by James oh, yeah. Ingram? Well, you know, it's so funny. I didn't mind it, but I recently, like within the last month, saw the film again in the Q&A uh, at Cinematique, um, uh, American Cinematique. They had like a screening of it. And I didn't realize they play that song um, I did my best. I think that was the Yeah, one. they have a clip of you. They That song and you, you have to check it out on YouTube. And that's probably why they think you're the evil person because of that clip, yeah. the ending, you know? Yeah. People make videos, though. oh yeah, of that. Yeah. Yeah, they, and you know what? I actually saw, um, so, uh, people did some remakes of it. I was like, I, I always thought it would be very fun if we ever did a sequel that if we had if there was a sequel to better off dead like you know if, as adults if lawrence and i were doing the parts oh yeah by the way he it's his birthday i think recently or even today maybe so oh like, it is happy birthday lawrence right? oh happy <laughs> birthday <laughs> yes um but i um i always thought it would be very cool that if there was a sequel to it that Lawrence's character, Gary, would be very successful, like a successful lawyer. And he's coming, he's at a mall and he's going up the escalator and he he's walking over to get like some drink at a lemonade stand. He's got a business meeting to go to. And when he gets to the the uh, like hot dog on a stick, you know, yeah. I'm I'm in like a little cap looking up going, and we like catch each other's eye and, it, and you find out that I've been with Rick and it's abusive marriage and the kids like he, he cheats on me and he leaves. And, and so you get now, now is our chance for Lawrence and I to have love. Right. And you get to see that love scene you've always wanted to see. And, you know, I always thought it would be kind of a fun thing, but then I thought, well, but how would it end? Would it end where mm. he goes off with me happily or would it end where he dumps me? Oh, or wow. would it end with he goes he marries rose <laughs> 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 or you know yeah like i want you know that's a so you know that ending again you know what would you do maybe you'll have to write it it's realistic yeah. though you know there is a lot of drama especially in young relationships like that so serious and you're so young oh yeah. seems like well, the end of the world it's life or death it really is i mean it, and as an adult, you can look back, but like then it was because, you know, like the person you see is that like who you're going to spend your life with. I mean, I think that's it is. It feels real. I, I when Last My Convergent to me, what I love about the film was that the kids, my character, along with all the other teens, we acted like adults. You really don't see the parents in the films. It's the kids making the decisions, the kid making decision to have sex, to take drugs, to have an abortion. It's like everybody's making big life decisions. Right. And I it's like fast times at Ridgemount High. Yeah. Well, there's another one, except that's the American version. You know, mm-hmm. it's like that was sort of like the happy, more that's why like it was kind of interesting when the films came out because yeah. they had totally two different perspectives. You know, and why do you think they don't have it on streaming platforms? I don't think they have Better Off Dead either. I, I, had a, I had to subscribe to Showtime to get that. Oh, really? Did, yeah, did it, it's there. Dead? Yeah, it's there. Uh, yeah. The but, only thing I can think of, and this is very strange, because let's face it, TikTok shows everything, right? Sure, you on, yeah. You know, or you, you go online, you see everything as a kid. Oh, yeah. So my guess is originally they were trying to limit the maybe the subject matter of better off dead because it's the suicide and they oh that okay have it on which is so weird we don't even think about that but that might be it and also um less american virgin the abortion you know it's an issue so yeah that's what i was thinking you know i mean who knows what i mean obviously it's so bizarre that it's even an issue now to me you know i I in today's time yeah I saw that Better Off Dead actually did have to change their wording on their original advertising material yep. to say, of yes. course, you're not never Better Off Dead or something or yeah. never. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, they, didn't, part of the book, too, that I wrote, like, you know, you you write a movie and then you you have to, like, say to yourself, well, who's watching it? And then... I don't know. I teach kids too. I teach acting. So I'm always going, you know, over 
I really go like over eight, well, over 18, over 21, under 21, you know? So, and my audience is both. I have like my under, you know, under 21 or under 18 audience. And then I have my over 21, you know? <laughs> sure. And I think that's good because as an actor, that's what you do. You know, you do everything, you know, that's your job. Once so, this got released to home video, I think really that was when, as far as the research that I did, that this thing became just like super big. You don't even realize what you're doing, even when it's being released into theaters. And you're like, oh, you know, that now everybody's so hypersensitive about every little thing, too, you know, so. Yeah. Well, some films were like completely X'd out. I mean, I, I know like some of the John Hughes films, you you would think, oh, my gosh, those are those are gold, those are classic. And even some of those have been seen as, oh, well, you don't, you know, we, you know, yeah. clicks, you know, that's like how, how you want to be, you know, seen or you don't want the films to be like that. Um, you know, I think everybody has to, I can understand that, um, but I will say that. I but my point more was, I don't want to talk about all that stuff, but I was saying like at the time, you don't even see oh. what, what you're doing. I mean, didn't at the time, uh, correct me if I'm wrong now, is this rumor true? John Cusack didn't like the movie when he saw it, did he? Oh, yeah, he oh. did not. Uh, but I think it was because John, I mean, he was, okay, when we made the film, he was great. We had a blast. He was funny, sweet, committed, creative, um, upbeat, um, but I think that, you know, maybe he saw his career in a different light. He wanted to, I think, be maybe seen more seriously. I'm not sure. Mm. I did yeah. see John. I did meet John uh, maybe like a couple of years ago, or maybe right, maybe 2019, when, right before COVID hit. I saw him mm. at a convention. And, um, you know, he told me that he doesn't hate the movie. He just mm. thought, you know, it was like he, I think he didn't see the why everyone is loving it. And I think it's, he, uh, you know, I, he never had kids. I had kids. So to me, that movie, I can show my kids, you know, it, it, <laughs> it's old. Mm -hmm. and you could sit with your kids and watch it. And so I think for him not having that experience, maybe he just felt like, well, that's just not a very, you know, important film. And I get it, but it makes people feel great. Sure. You know, it's, it makes people and people bring it every year for Christmas. And there is something to be said about a film that makes you feel happy because that's the, why you want to watch it again. You know, Sounds like he just kind of had a reaction and being a young guy, you know, it wasn't exactly what he expected. And he just uh, he's done so many great things. Yeah, sure. I mean, Well, that's why yeah. I said as an actor, you don't know what your story is. You yeah. People hire you and they see what their vision of something is. Um, so he, you know, I didn't have the choice, I guess, at the time. Now, what uh, made you want to go back to uh, Cal State Northridge to get your degree in teaching? That's a great school. Yes, I love Cal State you. Northridge. The campus oh. is awesome. Um, you know, thank you for uh, saying that. Okay, so when I went to NYU, I had to stop because I was, uh, my career took off. And when you get opportunities in life, you have to take them. You can't just, they won't wait for you. Okay, so... I did all of my acting, and then what happened was by the end of the 80s, um, I, oh, I met my husband, I met like like boyfriend, then became my husband, and then I wanted to have kids. So I stopped being in the entertainment business for a while to raise my kids, because I wanted to be there for them. I didn't want to be traveling, I didn't want to be working, I'm working, you know, um, away from them, because, you know, uh, acting takes you away, and... I had a lot of traveling and um, I just wanted to be with my kids. So during that time, I thought, okay, well, maybe I'll go back to school at night. And I thought if I major in English, maybe I can. And uh, by the way, I also went to art school and I went to, um, uh, I took extension classes at UCLA. And I've always been somebody who has been interested in gaining more information just for the sake of learning. You know, I'm, I'm, like I love uh, learning new information. So, um, and because remember at the time there was no internet, all right? Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> there was no, it, you couldn't learn anything unless you took a class. Um, so, and I, I took paint, I'm a great painter, artist. I got a certificate in illustration. I love art. Um, I, um, 
I did a lot of painting before that. I wrote a children's book. I, I've done a lot of um, art. So when I went, then I decided, okay, I'm going to go back to school. But I thought I'm going to major in English uh, with a with a minor in theater because I thought, well, I want to learn more about theater because I didn't spend a lot of time doing that. And then I also thought, well, um, English, uh, I thought maybe what if I became like an English teacher and then wound up doing drama and bringing that back into it. I, I just just wanted to finish my degree, but kind of I thought let, that would probably be a good thing to do which is interesting because I never thought it would I never thought of writing books but in the end that is really what was so helpful about it majoring in English because then I when I wanted to write what my experiences were it was so much easier because I've had that you know, training um, so that's how I got my degree and I graduated in I think 2014 mm. How cool is that? So like that, I'm just telling people, you're never too old to graduate. It was very exciting. And because of that, on top of it, I've got credentials. So now I actually teach also as a, I, not only do I act and I do movies, but I also coach professional actors, hmm. um, teach, you know, young actors, up and coming actors, um, one-on-ones, but I also teach um, classes in a school where I work with kids um and teaching them drama and uh i work with k through eight but i've also worked with high school kids so i have a very large experience range of experience and you're still all over the place you're still acting right wow i'm acting yeah i am very good at writing books and writing um i'm very creative and i just sort of use my time well and i'm a mom you know, like, yeah, my kids. So like now my kids are doing something and my, I have my husband, we go on dates, you know, like, and that kind of thing. We have our own time too. Um, but I think what it is, is that I don't take time for granted, you know, because we, you know, it does money is not the most valuable thing. Your time is where you spend your time, what you do with your time. And then it's your health. And then it's, love <laughs> the mm-hmm. Indonesian language <laughs> and um yeah and then and uh money comes when all that is in focus you know so sure um, one thing we didn't ask uh, what was it like working with Bert Young oh I love Bert <laughs> Bert is such a sweetheart I have to tell you I was blown away working with Bert I couldn't believe um, for those of you, I don't know if you know that he was in Rocky. Um, when I found out that I was going to be working with him, I was happy because I wanted to work with somebody really, you know, professional. And I had just finished Virgin. I'm, I, I think I, yeah, I just finished Virgin. And um, everyone in Virgin was like a newbie. You know, we were all new actors. Um, but Bert and Ratanya and James Olsen, were actors that I really thought, oh, I'm going to actually work with prof- real professionals. Um, and it was very funny. Somebody said to me, weren't you know, weren't you scared of Bert? Like he was so angry in the film. And I, I think it was because I trusted him so much as an actor. Like I just trust, he's just the nicest guy that I, it never occurred to me. And he was like laughing, like making jokes on, after we would be working. But I think because I trusted him, he um i just i didn't have any fear working sure with because, because that's really what it's about as an actor you must trust the people you're working with i once had a situation where i worked with somebody who i thought i could trust and they were not trustworthy and it was mm. not good and you know you have to you have to, actors have to take care of other actors you have to be respectful you have to it's a very delicate experience on set you know, you're coming together with people you don't know. And so you're, um, what do you have to say? Like you're, you can't be sloppy with your uh, behavior. You know, you have to be respectful. And he was cool. I just, all I can say is he was really fun, cool. And uh, we had a blast. I mean, as as scary as that movie is, it is it's and as real it as it is it was because we had such a very comfortable experience working together as a cast and you can tell like by uh like roles like back to school where he played lou that he's just a down-to-earth guy oh yeah oh absolutely 
oh, he's just he's just hilarious. I mean, he's he's just a really good guy. What he is is he is again. I think this is probably the, a good word. He's he's I'm not going to say he's truthful into the say. I mean, his whatever his life is 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 whatever it is. But he's when he's in the he's very in the moment. And he's very open. And I learned from, I have to say, I think I learned from him just to get into the character more. You know, just that was just something like, I, I felt free to be able to play Patricia Montelli and not be, um, you know, pulled back. I think that's, I think I would say this, when you work with professional actors, they love what they're doing and they commit and they are in the moment. And so if you feed off that energy, your performance will be better. So, yeah. Wow, yeah. I'm really fun too. What about the commercials you were in? What were some of the commercials that you were in? Uh, that was very fun. I did, um, oh my gosh, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, which was so funny because there's a show, um, the Colbert, uh, Colbert show, uh, Stephen Colbert. Mm -hmm. and. The, I think it was like last year or even this, year, I don't know when it was, he did some kind of uh, sketch on COVID and he used one of my peanut butter commercials, the peanut butter oh, wow. I did, the Reese's <laughs> in the sketch. And I get calls from people, going, oh my God, Diane, you were just on Colbert. And I'm like, what? I was on Colbert, what's <laughs> happening? Wait, are you kidding me? And I was so honored and so happy because somewhere in the writer's room, somebody thought of that commercial and said yeah. oh, God, it's in. and that made me so happy like who watch who remembers commercials and I was like wow somebody in the writer's room made it like that made an impression on them so uh <laughs> it was very fun so yeah um commercials are great training it, it really got me to learn the technical aspects of acting mm. hitting a mark hitting your lights holding positions um repeating your action over and over again um I used to think that all actors did commercials then later on I was like oh some people never do them some people just do they do short films um so they never get any, the experience but for me as an actor I wanted to experience everything I wanted to do modeling commercial theater soap opera voiceovers like I couldn't I didn't feel like I could call myself an actor unless I did everything film television you know tv movies guest star parts theater um so that was my kind of early goal to try everything. And you were fortunate to never be typecasted, wouldn't you say? I love that you said that. Thank you. Um, I, I don't think so. Um, I think that I'm a, a person that you can give a part to and I can, I can make it work. But, you know, obviously you're limited to, you know, you're in a certain way, you're look in a certain way. Um, but I'd always have tried to step out of my comfort zone and always tried to give my, uh, give people who watch me something like, I want people to watch me and go, wait a minute, is that the same person? I love that. Like to me, like I love the, uh, there's maybe a handful of actors that I know that I believe, like I go, oh my gosh, that's the same person. I'm, I can't believe it. Um, and I really respect actor to actor. I really respect those actors. Um, if you are typecast, um, well, and I, I think that's great too, because you're obviously a, a really great type, you know? But um, for me, what made me very excited was to play so many different characters. Sure, we can we can see it with your, you know, extensive uh, roles. Thank you, and like even a Terror Vision, okay? This oh movie, yeah, okay. Terror, Terror Vision is a cult comedy. Um, the reason why I really like that film is because I always wanted to play a punk rocker, but I never looked the part. I don't have that. I didn't really have the voice, you know, like that's, you know, kind of deep, kind of gravelly kind of sound. And so, yeah. and I have an upbeat personality and I thought, you know, no one's going to hire me in that role. But after I did Better Off Dead, this part came up and the, um, and they, they wanted to see me for the audition and I thought oh my goodness if I'm given the opportunity to audition for Susie Putterman I am going for it I just am so excited so I created this character um and I still had my short curly hair but I my attitude and my body language and my voice um 
I convinced the director that I can play Susie Putterman. And I'm so thrilled he hired me because then later on, it just became this like super duper cool character with like the Cindy Lauper hair and tons of cool makeup and leather jacket and tutus and boots and fishnet stockings and um, just a very fun, over the top cartoony character. And where was that one filmed at? Oh, that was filmed, believe it or not, in Rome, Italy. Wow. For Here. no reason other than Ooh. the fact that the, that they were able to uh, do it and afford to make it. Yeah, it was cheaper for them to bring the cast over and shoot it there than it was, I think, in America. Um, so we got to live in Rome for a month, which was wow. amazing, amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, and then work with this monster, this actual gooey, real monster not you know cgi i mean that's the other thing too like today i look in at you know a lot of the special effects and it's all in computer and the actors never get to see the real monster um i mean they have to use their imagination they have to use their skills it's all you know it's all in the acting but i was very fortunate to be able to actually see the hungry beast which was this sort of a giant i'm gonna say turd looking monster <laughs> it's like hovered with goo and it but it was kind of like a cute like a dog kind of in its its way it behaved and if you haven't seen the movie just check out terror vision it's, it's on nice. yeah it's on youtube that one's on youtube also oh, good. good excellent what about uh working with andy griffith oh you know what uh i never got to actually meet him but i did work with linda pearl Okay. So, yeah, but Andy Griffith, I would have loved to because I used to watch Maybury RFD. Okay. Um, was Where kid. was that one filmed at? Wilmington? That was, uh, no, that was LA. We should wow, have okay. I do have a funny story, actually. Um, there was, uh, this is kind of just a funny thing. I was, you know, I used to audition for all these different TV shows. And one of the shows I auditioned for was After MASH. You know, the show MASH? Sure, okay. After MASH. And uh Jamie Farr um was on the show and they were looking for a an actress to play his girlfriend and so I auditioned and I got the part <laughs> but I was remember I remember thinking this is very strange for me to play Jamie Farr's girlfriend but okay like sure I'll you do it so I show up to the set and when they saw me with Jamie, they went, mm, we have to send you home. <laughs> because oh. Oh. I looked too young next to him. Mm. It looked like inappropriate. Yeah, it was not good. That's what I was so, going to ask next was, <laughs> was there any roles that you auditioned for that you really wanted, but you didn't get? Oh, yeah. I mean, that would, well, that was a fun one. That was a really fun one. Um, you played fairly younger Yep. I mean, ages in the movies. I think you're in your 20s, even in 19, I mean, for um, Virgin, American Virgin. Oh, Virgin. You're like 21 or two or something. Virgin, I was 19. Well, oh, okay. okay. Amityville, I was 20. Oh. Better Off Dead, I was like 23, maybe. Okay. And, and your character was probably five years younger, easy, yeah. six years younger, seven even. Yeah, okay. And then TerraVision, I think I was like 20 five or 26 mm. something like mm. that but um yeah you look really um, young. I always look young and yeah. so, and I know people were always trying to like they wanted me to be on shows but I think I just I just read too young for the kind of roles that they wanted me to play so it was it was tricky although now like it's much easier I don't know it's kind of funny I get hired I just I did a pilot which um first I did a pilot where I play like um this uh, waitress and then I wind up working at a dry cleaners and so like I've done I'm doing a lot of different characters and a lot of different work but now it's a little bit easier than back then because I think what it is is also people remember me and so then they now go oh okay well maybe other people remember her so maybe I'm have a better chance of being picked I don't know um but wait you were bringing up something and I wanted to touch on that wait what did you just going say? going for a role and that you didn't get oh okay well the ultimate the all the big story and that this is in my first book and i go into detail on it uh is um amity um i'm sorry amadeus 
that was, it was between me and um, Elizabeth Berridge for the part. And that was, if I have to say of all the things I've ever done, that was the most difficult auditioning process I have ever gone through. And I go through it in the book piece by piece because, you know, as an actor, especially during that time, you- Stanzi. Yes, Stanzi, Costanza, Mozart's wife, that was the role. And, you know, I had, I, you know, you, you audition, you have a callback, you have another callback, you have a screen test, like the levels of getting a job back then were so, um, they took, uh, it just took a lot of energy, focus, uh, bravery. Um, and it was, it was really hard. I know that I did a really good audition, a, a really good uh, screen test. Um, and they, I said to them, actually, when they, when I went up not getting it, they said to me, like, they actually sat us down in Czechoslovakia. Like I auditioned, they flew me to Prague to audition. And they actually sat me down and said, you know, we have to give the part to Elizabeth. And I was like, <gasps> you know, so that moment um, really was a strong thing in my life. And, but at the same time, if I had done it, and I always say this, if I had done that film, most likely I would not have done Better Off Dead or Bill and Ted's mm, because yeah. it wouldn't have, I would have been on the A-list and I wouldn't have, it, I probably would be more doing have more drama, you know? Um, so I'm glad every, and I wouldn't have met my husband and had my kids. So sure. forget it, it's, it was fine. It all worked out, so. I recognize the math teacher who was at the beginning of Amadeus. What's that actor's name? Oh my gosh. Uh, um, he's in so many, he's so great, that guy. Vincent Scavelli. Oh my goodness. There's a, yeah, yeah he, he just pops up all over the place. Great yes. guy, great oh, character. I, and that was the other thing. Oh, I have a, a funny story. Um, F. Murray Abraham, this is a kind of Amadeus story, but it's kind of funny. Cool. Before, okay, Summer Girl. I did Summer Girl. Yeah. Just finished Summer Girl. And, or maybe I was on my way to do Summer Girl. I think I was on my way. And no, I just, I don't know. Well, it was something like that. So anyway, I'm in the plane and I'm in first class and I'm sitting next to a guy with a script and the script is Amadeus. And I am I see a script, so I'm an actor. So I'm like, oh, what are you reading? <laughs> and it's F. Murray Abraham. Mm -hmm. F. Murray Abraham won the Oscar, okay, for comedy you know, Amadeus, but he was coming from Scarface. He had just finished Scarface and he was about to go and do Amadeus or he's like, I'm going to go work on this film. And I got the script and he's like, it was wow. very, he looked at me and he goes, it's very funny, but there's a character, a character in the film that you'd be really good for. He actually said that to me, <laughs> <laughs> cut to like a month later where I show up and I'm on set in Prague and he's there and auditioning. It just is kind of, it was just a great, moments wow yeah kind of that's amazing. one of my favorite movies really oh it's a beautiful film and i have to say elizabeth um i think she's adorable in it and i think she did a great job um my i remember when i did I, when i went on screen tested for it too like i was so tired because i was back to back on projects and I, I thought you know what if elizabeth does a great job that's all that matters it, the most important thing is the film it, and that's what it is so um anyway but that but just I would have loved to have gotten that project just for the sake of the experience, working with Milos Moore and, you know, wearing the outfits and, you know, playing the character. I mean, uh, you'd have been Christ. great. I can tell. Yeah. So, <clears throat> maybe someday I'll show the screen test that I have. <laughs> oh, that'd be cool. I would appreciate that because I, oh, yeah. you so know, I, I watched the director's cut and behind the scenes and I just watched everything I could about that thing. It just, I was just amazed by that film actually. Beautiful. And and by the way, Milos Forman was the nicest guy. I loved him, completely connected with him. He was I, he was wonderful. Who? Great Who's director. That? Oh, the director, yeah. He did yeah. Cuckoo's Nest, you know. He oh, I didn't. Yeah. That guy was also in that movie. Yes, that's why. I think probably because he knew maybe that was the connection. Wow. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Yeah, wow. Isn't it funny? Like everyone sort of connect like a web you stay long yeah. enough and then the story is sort of connect so well we really appreciate you coming on and i think in today's time you know you are just gonna you already are blowing up you know you're as big as ever but you're going to continue it i'm sure you would agree that social media helps 
because you connect with your fans so much easier than it was in the 70s, the 80s, oh the 90s. Oh, you would never, I mean, you could never even see the actor that you liked. No. Let alone like watch on a show or meet at a convention. That was just not a thing. Um, but I would say if people are interested, I mean, please follow me on social media. Um, Diane Frank, on Twitter, it's Diane Franklin 80 and go to actress Diane Franklin on Instagram. And then Facebook, you need to go to Diane Franklin official page and you'll see like these black and white books, my books, and then go there. Um, but I also want to put a shout out to my daughter, the next generation. Yes. Uh, some some sure. of the younger people will probably know my daughter. Her name is Olivia De Laurentiis and she is um, like TikTok famous. Um, wow. And she's also was on a TV show called Pivoting as an actress. And uh, she has a, a podcast that is um, uh, called, it's on YouTube called, uh, it, her, she goes with a comedy partner and her name is Olivia and the follow her at Sid and Olivia. So S Y D Sid and Olivia um, on TikTok. And then she has a Snapchat show called Apocalypse Goals. Just look up Olivia De Laurentiis, D E L A U R E N T I S. Follow her. And that's more important. <laughs> the follow my daughter doing her stuff um, because she's hilarious. She's a comedian. And I think you'll also find it funny because we sort of sound alike a little bit. So, and look maybe. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, we can post her uh, links to the uh, podcast. Thank so. you. That would be great. I just, sure. I just, she's, um, she is really up and coming. She's got stuff. I think people are going to start to really, the, you know, the, the younger generation will know her more. Sure. Definitely. Well, thanks so much, Diane. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.